coming up on The Sporting Chef. Today on the show, I'm making burgers. Susie's got meatball soup. Tommy shows a Ling Cod who's boss. Melissa shows you what to do with your stinky fingers. Stacy's getting saucy. C-Dub makes a giant dessert. And Buddy's making eel. Did you think he'd be making chicken? What do you get when you find the best fish in game chefs? Cookbook authors, award winners, fishmongers, outdoor experts, and put them on the fastest half hour on outdoor television. Hosted by one of America's best known wild game chefs, Scott Lacey, the sporting chef. Brought to you by Camp Chef, the way to cook outdoors. So, you know, you can make burgers from just about any kind of game meat, except maybe armadillo. Um, anybody who watched the Dead Meat Show, uh, armadillo is the only animal that can transmit leprosy to humans, so don't eat the armadillo um, unless you want leprosy. Okay, so what I have here, I'm making burgers. This is just spoony breasts. This has been brined in the High Mountain Gourmet Game Bird and Poultry Brine. You see the color? Um, it's got a little bit of nitrite in it, nothing to be afraid of. So I save pork shoulder, pork trim, so when I'm making something like burgers or sausage, um, I run it through the Weston grinder, and there it is. Over here is venison. Venison with more of the pork trim, fatty pork trim. Last, I have wild turkey. Now, wild turkey is really, really lean, and what I've done here is I've added bacon trim have some different kind of ingredients. We're gonna have a little bit of spicy, a little bit of savory, three different flavors of burger with three different kinds of game meat. Um, and while I'm doing that, I want you to check out Susie Jimenez. She's our fiery Latina, who's gonna show you how she makes meatball soup. Thanks so much, Chef Scott. So we're spicing it up in the mountains, and here's a recipe of the day. So Chef Scott, I'm gonna show you one of the traditional soups that my family makes, and it's called an albondiga soup, which means a meatball soup. So we're gonna start out with a little olive oil, and then we're gonna add all these amazing vegetables, which is carrots, celery, and onions. Now we need to spice it up a little bit with the jalapenos, so we're gonna add those in there as well. We're gonna save the tomatoes and the cilantro till later because they do have a lot of juice that will kind of come out a little bit too much. And we're gonna mix this up. We're gonna season it with some of these amazing high mountain seasonings that you sent over. A little bit of the garlic pepper, a little bit of the Italian herb. Then we're gonna zest some garlic into this and ginger. So you wanna zest the lime and then we're gonna use this for the stock later. And then, of course, you got to add a little bit of salt to this. Now, this is when we add our tomatoes and our cilantro. Now, of course, you always want to deglaze this with a beer, wine, or liqueur. And when you say deglaze, what's happening is that you're taking out all these caramelized flavors at the bottom of that pot. You're going to add a little bit of beer. Add your chicken stock to this. Now we're gonna make our albondigas, which means meatballs. And it's super simple. You grab your elk, it's nice and grounded, an egg yolk, salt, and a little bit more of that Italian herb. So you're gonna incorporate the egg into it. And what's gonna happen is it's gonna allow it to form into these awesome meatballs that you're gonna drop right into the soup. You can also use ground turkey, chicken, wild boar. I mean, anything that you're going out and hunting can really be pureed and put right into this. So now you can see that I'm gonna form these little meatballs. You're just gonna drop them right in there. Once you use up all the meatballs, then you're just gonna let it simmer for 10 minutes and you're gonna see how the broth is gonna continue to form. So after 10 minutes, you're gonna see that all the meatballs are now cooked. We're gonna serve this in a bowl. You want all your vegetables to be nice and al dente too. Don't overcook them. That's also a very important part of your meal. And I like to garnish mine with some cabbage, some cilantro, a bit of lime. You know, we love Susie on the Sporting Chef show. She's a regular feature here, and let me just show you what's going to go in here. This is my duck burger. 
I'm going to make my duck burger a little on the spicy side. I've got some chopped jalapeno peppers, some high mountain fajita seasoning, and this is masa flour. It's kind of going to give it kind of that corn tortilla taco type flavor, masa flour instead of regular flour. That's going to also help stick, help it bind together. For the turkey, the wild turkey that has the bacon in it, I'm going with the high mountain poultry rub and some chopped onion and some fresh chopped garlic, not the garlic out of the jar. Food Saver has this new Game Saver Outdoorsman. The Game Saver Outdoorsman is perfect if you've got a cabin, a boat, an RV. It's super, super light, extremely portable. And I'm just gonna seal this up. Also, when you're gonna seal a piece of meat like this, if you freeze it first, you'll get a much better seal and I've mentioned that a time or two on the show. The Game Saver Outdoorsman is one of four different Game Savers that Food Saver makes, from the titanium to the little portable Outdoorsman. Coming up next on the show, um, I've got burgers, of course. We're gonna work on that. And then I have Tommy Gomes, who has his way with a lingcod, and Melissa Bachman, who shows you how to make your fingers smell better when you're in the field. Stay tuned. Welcome back to The Sporting Chef. I'm Scott Laseth, and today I'm making burgers. I've got the turkey burger done, the duck burger done. This is my venison burger. I've got venison ground with a bunch of pork trim. To this one, this is one of my favorites. I've got blue cheese, some onions, chopped up onions. I've got high mountain venison rub. What I did is I took these cheap dried shiitake mushrooms from the Asian market, put them into a food processor and grind them up into this fine powder. So you have this mushroom flavored powder. Um, and I may have done this a time or two on the show before, but I frankly, I forget what I've done. And what this also does, just like the masa flour on the duck burger, is it helps it bind together because the stuff's kind of moist. You put that dry stuff on it, it helps it bind it together. I'm going to make all of these burgers and they're going to go into my Camp Chef Smoke Pro. Now, I don't know if you're a pellet smoker kind of person. I am. This is a pellet grill and smoker by Camp Chef. The Smoke Pro absolutely has everything you would ever, ever want in a pellet smoker and then some. You're going to find out this extra cool device that it has that goes with it. But first, I want you to check out Tommy Gomes. Here's Tommy showing you what he does with a lingcod from start to finish. Hey, Scott, how you doing? Tommy saying hello. Pacific Northwest bottom fish. We got lingcod, we got cabazon, we got canary yellow eye rockfish. But today we're gonna take a lingcod and we're gonna cut it up and we're gonna cook it up over here in the uh, Camp Chef griddle kitchen stove area that we got. I'm just gonna make a cut behind the collar here Cut the belly open a little bit, run it down here, roll it, and we're just gonna run the knife straight along the spine, do another little slice like this. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna run my knife right down to the center of the fish, and there you go. On a filet like this, you're gonna have a little bit of bone because I cut cut right through the rib bone. So all we're gonna do is we're just gonna get a flexible blade and we're gonna lean into it and we're just gonna run our blade through, flip it over just like that. You just wanna watch for the bones. It's kinda like nature's toothpick. I'm gonna take the skin off because I wanna show you something that's really fun and exciting about this piece of fish. Grasp it and then just go nice and slow. You're not on a boat. You don't get paid by the piece. You just want to take it nice and easy. And look, that's a beautiful piece of fish right there. Plancha it up, cook it on a Camp Chef flat grill, salt, pepper, make yourself some fish chips out of it. When I'm cutting a piece of fish, I like to cut it at an angle. It gives it a little different cut. I'm just gonna throw it down there. Green tea infused with garlic. Bring out a little bit of that flavor. One thing that I like to use is my 29 cent lid. Let's see what's going on here. 
So you can see around the edges, it's starting to get a little pale white. It's what you want. Flip it over, you can see the caramelization starting to occur. A little togarashi, add a little heat to it on the back end. You just want to use a little bit of this, hold it up high, and just drizzle it over the top just like that. You don't want to put too much of that in your standard white sauce. There you go. We'll just add a little bit of lemon to this. So Scott, there you have it. California link cod. Northern California, where the water's cool, all the way up to Alaska, down to the Mexican border. You don't want to overcook it. Let it finish off on the plate. Ling cod coming out of Northern California. Thanks, Tommy. Now here's another buddy of mine, Melissa Bachman. She's got the smarts, she's got the looks, and she knows her way around the outdoors. Um, she also has some great tips. Today her tip is how to take care of your hands when you go to the field, and here's Melissa. I just wrapped up a morning hunt, and then I actually decided to move one of my blinds. And when I moved it, I wanted it to blend in, so, well, the closest thing I could find is a bunch of mud around. Mudded it all up, now that blind has no sheen. The trouble is, now I've got some muddy hands, and I'm coming back for lunch. So one of the things I like to do is keep some Sen Killer Gold, the foaming hand wash, right in the back of my truck. And the reason is simple. It has a really easy rinse formula, and you don't need a lot of water. So you can just squirt it right in your hands, and then just rub them together, and it has no scent, so you don't have to worry about going back out after whitetails and having them spook off from some scented soap that you're using. But the nice part is, you can lather it up, and all you really need is a simple bottle of water. You can rinse it right off. It doesn't take much at all, so it works nice for the back of your truck, or let's say you're in camp somewhere and you don't have a lot of access to water, it really works great. Also, if you've been doing any um, gutting deer or anything and have blood on your hands, it works well there too. So in the end, it's just nice to keep right in your truck. That way you can clean up, you don't have to worry about scent when you go back into the field, and you can have an excellent hunt. You know, my friends tell me that they would rather watch Stacey Harris than me on the show. I know, hard to believe. That's why I've got myself and C-Dub and Buddy T to balance things out. Stay tuned, we've got a lot more to come on The Sporting Show. Welcome back to The Sporting Chef, my Camp Chef Smoke Pro pellet grill and smoker. Venison burgers here, and what I'm gonna get is smoky flavor, but that's not all. I've got this little special unit here that I've attached to it that's gonna make it extra crispy on the outside and still smoky and moist on the inside. And now the moment you've all been waiting for, my friend Stacy Harris, who hails from Alabama. There's another cool thing about Alabama I want you to look into. The Alabama Wildlife Federation has wild game cook-offs all year long. They have a big final final during the summer Check out AWF, Alabama Wildlife Federation, and their wild game cook-offs. And also, check this out, Stacy Harris. Today I'm gonna be making barbecue sauce. And it's not your ordinary barbecue sauce with a tomato base, but it's Alabama barbecue sauce. And it's white sauce, and the base is mayonnaise. It's got mayonnaise, it's got apple cider vinegar, it's got cayenne pepper. Cayenne, you can put as little or as much as you want to. I like it hot. The people in the South like it hot. All right, then I'm gonna add some lemon juice from one lemon. And I'm gonna add lemon zest. Lemon zest, you don't have to, but I love that lemony flavor. Lemon zest is just the top layer of the lemon. Don't get the pith or right below, you know, the really yellow stuff. Don't get that because it's very, very bitter. And I like a lot of pepper in my barbecue sauce. Some people may not like any. I like a lot, so I'm gonna add a lot. Okay, I'm gonna pour this over some wild turkey breast that I cooked earlier. Most of the time, it's served over chicken, but today, it's served over wild turkey breast. It's also a good dipping sauce if you wanted to dip your fried chicken in, just whatever you wanna do. Okay, in the south, we serve it up with baked beans 
coleslaw, and a side of white bread. And that's how we do it here in Alabama. So while Stacy was showing you all about the Alabama white sauce, I got my burger sets ready to go. I've got a glass of Michael David Six Cents Syrah. The Michael David guys are good friends of mine from the Lodi area. They're known for a lot more than Zinfandels now, especially at Michael David. Check them out. Over here, I've got the Smoke Pro going. And then now I want you to check out C-Dub. Today, he has a giant dessert for all of us. We're gonna make a big cookie in our 12-inch Camp Chef Dutch oven. And I've already got it done. One of the things when you're making cookies is trying to get them out of these Dutch ovens with that deep four-inch sidewall. So what I've done, and this is a recipe my son used to use when he was a river guide, he just would take, like I've done, a 32-ounce package of your favorite cookie dough, put it in your 12-inch Dutch oven, and we're gonna make one big cookie, and you could cut this and serve it like you would a pie. Now we're going to do this on our Camp Chef stove. Normally, we would be baking this with charcoal on the bottom, charcoal on the top. But here in the West, one of the things we oftentimes end up with is fire restrictions late in the summer. No campfires, no charcoal, kind of tough to bake until the Camp Chef folks came along with their Dutch oven dome. And the way this is designed, on our stove here, we have a couple of diffuser plates and that moderates the heat on the bottom. Our Dutch oven sits right there on our uh, diffuser plates. And this dome will fit either a 12 or a 14 inch Dutch oven. And what that's doing now, that is catching the heat and it's diffusing it off the bottom because that would be quick to burn our cookie if we didn't have the diffuser plate in there. And now it's bringing that heat up and capturing it on the top. And let's imagine that over here, this Dutch oven is, we're baking with charcoal and it starts to rain. Grab my dome, put that on there. I've got an umbrella. We're going to have a cookie in about 15 minutes. And I think my heat's just right. My nose tells me our big old cookie's done. So we're gonna set our Dutch oven dome off. Here is a big Dutch oven cookie. And you can see how that is just perfect it's pulled away from the walls on our dutch oven that's a dutch oven cookie using the uh, dutch oven dome i've got a bunch of smoke on my burgers over here is the camp chef smoke pro barbecue sear box you can use it to put a really nice sear on the outside and by the way as i've said on the show a bunch of times searing meat on the outside does not seal in the juices. Let's just sit here for just a second, and I want to give it a flip, and you'll see what I'm talking about. I'm going to give them all just a little quarter to get them evenly marked. All right, let me flip this guy. You'll see the crusty outside. While I'm flipping the rest of them, I want you to check out my buddy, Buddy T, who has his way with an eel. Hey, it's Buddy T. Boy, I was saltwater fishing the other day. Caught him a eel. And uh, I put the salt, brown sugar on it for a few days. I'm gonna throw him in a smoker. This is one of my secrets here. Put that chicken thighs on there. I'm gonna close this up, let that eel get some smoke on it, and I'll show you what it looks like. Try to do that buckboard bacon cure on anything. You wanna make sure you rinse all that salt and sugar off of it. Rinse that all off before you put any of your seasoning on it. See, you've been on there about 10 minutes. It don't take much to cook them because there ain't a whole lot to them. It's kind of like cooking a snake. You don't want to overcook it. So I put some trail dust on him, and you can see I didn't get quite all that anal being out of there, that little feathery stuff. Slice a little bit off of here. I tell you what, tastes a lot better than that snake. I put that trail dust on it. That's all you need to do. All right, come on down. We'll go try and catch one for you. Stay tuned. We've got a lot more to come on The Sporting Show. Welcome back to the show. 
This is the big finish where I show you what food looks like. And I thought that the venison blue cheeseburger would look really good with a nice fried over easy egg on top. This is a sauce that I've discovered, Midland Ghost Pepper Sauce, right next door to Alabama. This comes out of Midland, Georgia. Tribute to Stacy. We'll call this Alabama white sauce, but what it really is is mayonnaise on my jalapeno duck burger. I've got a little salsa. Here's just a little bit of grilled green onions. On this guy, another Alabama product. This is Wickles pickle relish here. That's gonna go on top of my wild turkey burger. These will all get bunned up. I'm gonna have some of my Michael David Six Sensora. Special thanks today to all the guests on the show, starting with Susie Jimenez, Tommy Gomes, Melissa Bachman, Stacy Harris, C Dub, and of course, Buddy. And as always, special thanks to Camp Chef and all the other great sponsors that make this show possible and make it possible for me to invade your house every week. Check out sportingchef.com for a whole bunch of free recipes. Sign up for the newsletter. I appreciate you watching, and we'll see you next time right here on Sportsman Channel. I'm Scott Lasa, The Sporting Chef.